How many people come expecting God to do something? Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I believe we're going to see the miracle hand of God. I know we are. See, the miracle hand of God move today. Uh, we're just going to ask you to stand. Let's welcome the Lord into our service. We will welcome our Facebook and our YouTubers to join us this morning in our worship. And if you're out there and you need a miracle, believe with us because this is God's going to do miracles today. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and we just praise you. Lord, we worship you, God. What a privilege it is to be amongst thy people this morning. Lord, and we pray, God, we ask the Holy Spirit to have his way today, God. We pray, Lord, for divine miracles to take place amongst thy people, Lord. And, and Father, we ask, Lord, that we can just see your hand move mightily, Lord. Holy Spirit, we welcome you today, God. Let this service be your service, Lord, we pray. And Father, we ask that you'll receive our worship this morning, God, and be pleased with us. And we just give you praise. And the church says, Amen. give the Lord a good clap of worship this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to, we're entering into a spiritual warfare. So let's worship the Lord with all of our soul, mind, and strength this morning and let God have his way. Our sister Sheila, call us in.
will stand and rejoice as one people lifting one voice you're worthy of glory you're worthy of honor you're worthy of praise and we will shout and we will shout and proclaim the greatness of
sings your praise. The whole earth sings your praise. You are and you are holy as you are. You are holy as the whole earth sings your praise. The whole
of glory. You're worthy of honor. You're worthy of praise. You're worthy of glory. You're worthy of honor. You're worthy of praise. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You're worthy of glory.
I saw the Lord seated on his throne. He was clothed in glory. Oh, and exalted. around him, oh, and they cried, and we cried, you are holy, oh, so holy,
There's no God like you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's the presence of the Lord. That's his presence. That's his presence. Lord. feel like Moses said Lord if you don't go with us we can't go I got to have your presence got to have you we got to have his presence without the presence of the Lord it's not you're going through motions but boy when his presence shows up thank you Lord I know it's a day of miracles. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a clap of worship in the house. If you appreciate the presence of the Lord, would you just raise your hand and just tell him how much you love him? Lord, we just love him. Would you tell the Lord, without your presence, we can't go on? Lord, it's your presence we got to have. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. What a presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. What a presence. Mm. This is the beginning of something. This ain't an ending. This is the beginning. Yea, I say to thee, I will do a new thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the Holy Spirit ministering to you right now, touching you. Encouraging you, raising you up. He can do it all. Hallelujah. Jesus. Just take a second or two. We're so consumed with time. Just enjoy this.
praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. This is from, but it just keeps crossing my mind. We are standing in his presence, and there's angels all around. Is that not awesome? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
If that wasn't the most awesome worship, would you stand and give the Lord a hand this morning? Holy, holy. atmosphere breaking. Come on now. Do you feel the atmosphere breaking? One more praise. One more praise. from you the Lord gave me last Sunday he told me that for this Sunday let my people go <laughs> come on now say it again let my people go I'm talking to every every demonic spirit I'm talking to every sickness I'm talking to all God said let my people go yes. how do your sister here told me this morning she said I come this is my day of healing this is what I'm telling you loose her Lord yes. in Jesus name yes. arthritis and, and all the trouble that she has for muscles and, and her bones are healed right Lord, now Man, I feel it. Sister, sister uh, Mickey gave me this picture. This person that's autistic, autistic, has not, as far as they know, has said maybe one word. Yeah. And this is, that's why I carried this picture all morning. They didn't, they couldn't bring her, but. I carried that picture in my pocket, not because I'm special, but there's an anointing here. And I'm going to proclaim this in Jesus' name. The tongue is loose. The tongue is loose. Let my people go. Glory, hallelujah.
Somebody give the Lord some praise. Let my people go. What is it? Ruth. Ruth and Naomi. Awesome. Well, God's speaking to Ruth right now. I said, God's speaking to the roof right now. God has opened her understanding and he's cleared her voice. And the parents are going to begin to hear her put words together. Before long, she'll be putting sentences together. We've seen that a few times at this church. We know God can do this. It's coming. It's already happening. Amen. In Jesus' name, give the Lord another hand. Amen. Amen. Give our worshipers a hand again. In God. Brother Bill, can I say something? Go right ahead. I didn't obey the Lord last week. Shame on you. I don't know if you all felt what we felt up here last week. It was awesome. I didn't say a word today. But I felt it was like angels ministering around us last week up here. Come on. Amen. Amen. Yes, we do. Amen. Amen. Yes, they do. Amen. Uh. Amen. Yes. Victory, victory shall be mine. Amen. God is good, is he not? Yes. Amen. Speaking of angels, and we actually have this. I don't know if we still have the tape, but we actually have a, a DVD back there. did have it. It may be gone now because it's been a few years back. But uh, they was, somebody said, I seen an angel come, and they were walking up this aisle. And in the, v, in the DVD, you could see people's hair moving and the shadows, and it touched them. I didn't, somebody else, but several other people brought to my tent and said, did you watch? I said, no, I don't watch them. I don't like to hear myself. And, <laughs> but I watched that one. And you could see the shadows. You could see as, that, as the angel walked by, uh, people would, their, their hair would move. You could see their hair move. He thought, oh, that wasn't an angel. You believe what you want? I believe what I know. <laughs> Amen. Because God has angels around us. Amen. We're going to go ahead and give them a hand again. We're going to change the awesome presence of the Lord. This is a, we, we have declared this a healing, a beginning of healings and miracles, not just healings, miracles. That's why I know that God's going to move here on this and these others. That's why I know God is going to touch these young people. Because the Lord told me to touch all the young people, and I, I, I did. And I think... It ain't that I touched them. It's the obedience. Amen? I was... <laughs> I, I was... Uh, Sister Lisa, you can go to uh, Exodus, the fifth chapter and the first verse where I'll take my text. I, I just want to share this with you. Uh, I, I guess it was this morning. I'm not good on time, but Sister Becky and I was watching... I don't know who he is. He don't never give his name. But he calls himself the unnamed prophet or a known prophet. He's no country guy. He has no name. Don't give his name. And uh, he, I'd listened to him before give a prophecy. And, and he said that, I guess he was up in years where he began to prophesy. And he said an angel of the Lord come and touched him in the lips and told him to prophesy, began to prophesy. And 
I'm sitting here this morning, and this been a, if you think this been an easy service, it's been a battle for me. It, I've, been, I've been in a spiritual war this week, and, and I was here at church real early praying and seeking God. So I know God was giving us breakthrough. And so I'm, during the worship service, I began to just worship the Lord, and I said, God, I said, I, why haven't my lips ever been touched with fire? Hey, you want something? Ask for it. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I heard this, and he said, Son, I've touched your lips many times. He said, From a child up, you've been anointed. And then he said this, and this is when I begin to see what God was about to do. He said, I put a fire inside of your belly. He said, You have a fire in your belly. And how many knows the old prophet says, It's like a fire inside of a wheel and it's shut up inside of us. And I thank God for that because I'm not the only one, you too. We have a fire that's shut up inside of us. And we're about to, we're about to see God move like even, even back, I believe it will be even greater than, than the book of Acts. Really, we don't know because when you read the book of Acts, you're reading about 1% of what God did. You know, when you read the book of Acts, you see all these miracles take place and all, God doing all this, and you think, wow, but that was just about 1%. That, technically, most of the book of Acts is about one minister of all of them that God had. And so you're, you're not getting all that God done. In fact, wasn't it one writer, John, said that if everything the Lord done was recorded, there wasn't enough books on earth to... The earth couldn't even contain what he's done. My God is an awesome God. And so we're entering into a time, a season. And God gave me this message. He began to give it to me uh, last Sunday morning during the worship. And he began to lay some, this on my heart. Let my people go. Somebody say it again. I don't know how far I'm going to go because this is what I prayed this morning. This is my prayer. I, I prayed this this morning. I said, God, I cannot preach another message or pray for another person or stand on this word until I feel the anointing power of God. I said, it's, it, it's become words but not a meaning. I said, God, I want to feel that fire. I don't want to know I've been touched with fire. I want to feel the fire, God. And I, I prayed. I said, God, I need help. And I begin to feel such a breakthrough in my spirit. And that's why I'm sharing it with you, because I think sometimes we get caught up in ourselves, in our lives, things, and we miss something that God has for us because we forget where we, how God moved in our lives. So I'm going to minister. I don't know how long this morning. I, I don't know how far. I'm just going to go with the, what the Holy Spirit gives me this morning. I, I, I could close right now and be very happy. I could. I feel the presence. And I know that God's moved. But I also feel like I want to begin a certain part of this. I also heard this this morning. Sister Becky, we were listening to different messages. and I don't even know who said this. And but it, This goes so much to the church today. Maybe been Robin. No, Robin, I don't know. But he said, he said the church has, has got the McDonald's syndrome. We pull up to the drive-in window and said, give me a Happy Meal. Mad fries. <laughs> and what it is is we want a, something that makes us feel good. Right then. And, and we want it cheap. You know, we don't want to pay for it. We want it real cheap. And we want it instant, and we want it cheap. Well, that, 
is not biblical. Sounds good. But see what happens when you get on feel-good stuff. Monday or Tuesday, that feel-good, that McDonald's, that, that Happy Meal, and then he even said this, he said, and we want our toy. <laughs> Boy, church people love their toy, don't we? You know, we like our little toys. I don't know what that means, but we do like our little things. <laughs> Come on now, if you had kids and you ever went through a Happy Meal and they didn't give a toy, you went back through the window. I didn't get my toy. <laughs> and how many times, come on, parents and grandparents, have you had to go back through because they put onions or something that your, your kid or your grandchild didn't want and you, you had to go all the way, or Joe didn't like. <laughs> and, and, and you go back through because it ain't the way you want it. That, is that not the mentality of the church? If the preacher don't preach what we want, if the spirit don't move when we want, if it's not the song we like, if it's not our own little time zone, we're not happy. We'll find us another drive to. We go down to Wendy's. <laughs> I heard CJ Beckers try Taco Bell. <laughs> but you see what? Now I'm, I'm going to minister a little bit on let my people go. This will probably be a two-parter, maybe a three-parter message. That's why I'm not in no hurry how far I get today. But we're going to talk about, and in order to understand this, we're talking about we're exodus, we're exiting out of a routine into a move of God. We're exiting out of comfort into God's presence. We're exiting out of religion into what God wants. Wow. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you as we go through this, you're going to see it's not always easy. It's not always what we want. But boy, will the presence of God be moving in that. Would you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you this morning. Lord, I thank you for this wonderful spirit, your, your presence. There is no price that we can put on this. Lord, you are so awesome. I thank you for it, Lord. And as it comes time, God, I pray, Lord, just to I let your spirit anoint me today, God, my mind and my tongue, God. Let me speak the things that you would have me to speak. Open our hearts, Lord, because this is a time of sowing, a time of growing, and a time of exodus. We're coming out. Let my people go. In the name of Jesus, the devil will rebuke you. You do not steal, kill, or destroy this word and the church says i do have one quick announcement before we read the word next sunday is father's day but we have two people that wants to be baptized and uh, they've wanted to for a while and we're going to have a baptizing immediately following our sunday morning service we're going to be going down to probably i guess palmer's junction uh and wade out of the water and love baptizings I love, if it was up to me, I would love to be in one every week, and I just love them. And it's not God awesome. And so uh, we say that, and if there's other people, if you want to be baptized, let us know, because uh, we would definitely do that. Can we stand for the reading of one verse? It says, And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. And I feel that. <laughs> Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And the church says, hallelujah. You may be seated. But in order to have this and to be able to say this, I believe that the Old Testament, especially the books of the law, is 
is a type and shadow of things to come. You can find the, you can find the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can find where he was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Every bit of it is in the book, in the, most of it's in Genesis, in the, in the book of the law. And, and it's a type and shadow. And so I want to, this is one of the things I believe that God is showing us. If you want to exit us out of what has become of us, because I, I'm going to, I can, I believe this, and, and I believe that we all can agree on this, that we're not where God wants us to be. We're not seeing God's hand move the way that God wants to move. I believe we all know that. I believe that all the churches in the world know that. I've heard that preached from all denominations and all people. We're not, we're, God's, we're not letting God be God. And so what we have to do then, and especially in the last 20 to 30 years, we have become so complacent. We have become so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put it this way. We're just like the children of Israel. They spent 400 years in bondage, and they was used to it, and they liked it. You know how I know that? It's because if you study the history of this, when Moses led out the children of Israel, most theologists said there's a million and a half people that would not leave. They said, we want to be slaves. This is a good living. You see, there's a lot of people that's sitting in church and they're happy with what's going on, but they're not in the, in the land of the milk and honey that God has for them. I'm not saying that they're going to hell. I'm not proclaiming nothing. I'm saying they're living in a bondage state when they could be living in a land of milk and honey. And God says, I, in this day and hour, I'm taking you to a place of miracles and signs and wonders. And so the first thing I want you to notice about Moses in the third chapter and in the second verse. Moses was in the wilderness. And the Bible says he saw a fire. This will not go good with most people, but it's time the church sees the fire. I said, it's time the church sees the fire. What are you talking about, Pastor? Nobody's ever told me about the fire. I'm going to tell you, you need to read the book of Matthew. This is what it says. There's one coming after me that shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and water and words. He said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. We're in a time now that the enemy has such a stronghold in our nation, in our homes, in our families, in our schools, in our communities, that it's going to take something to break to let my people go. And so Moses seen the fire, and it got his attention. He said, that fire's burning, but it ain't, it ain't consuming there's something different about this fire. This is what I'm going to say. When the Holy Ghost begins to move, people will say there's a fire there. They can't explain it. Preachers can't explain it. We have no words for it. I cannot tell you what's happening, but there's a fire burning. But the thing about it, is we've got to take notice that we need the fire. And here's what happens when Moses saw the fire. It consumed his mind. Church, this is what I'm going to tell you. We have got to let God have control of our mind once again. Put this mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. We have got to get our minds off the, th off the things the enemy wants us to see. Do you know the enemy wants you to be discouraged? He wants you to worry about your bank account, your cupboards, your cars. He wants you to worry about your job. He wants to worry you about your children. He wants you to worry you about sickness, about all this. But this is what I'm going to tell you. Let the Holy Ghost fire come in. Get your mind off everything else. And put your mind on God. He's the one that we need. The consuming fire. 
See, we get our mind on off of our things that we see. And then all of a sudden, we get our mind off our petty. I'm going to tell you something. It's, it sounds, that's an easy message, but it's a hard thing. If you got a backache, it's hard to get your mind off your backache. Come on now. But as long as your mind's on your backache, that backache's bigger than God. When things have went wrong and you've had a rough week, it's hard to get your mind on worship. I was praying about worship this week, and the Lord showed me something about worship. The Holy Spirit says you cannot teach worship. He said you can't teach worship. In fact, he said you can't encourage people to worship. Worship is when you love God so much you can't help it. And I don't care who you are, that's what the Holy Spirit told me, and I believe him. If you can't worship God in the church, you definitely don't worship in your home. If you can't worship God in church, don't try to tell me I'm a home worshiper because you're lying to yourself. Because if you're a worshiper of God, you can't help it. You see, worship is not an emotion. It's a heart thing. I'm going to show you this in the scripture of Moses right here in a second. And this is what he said in verse number 4. He said, And then when the Lord saw that he turned unto me, and to see that God called unto him in the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And this is where God wants to hear us. Here am I. telling you we're perfect right now we're not i'm not going to tell you be perfect in 10 years but god wants to hear you say right now hear my lord if the fire of the holy ghost embarrass me here am i if the if the fire of the holy ghost guides me the, everybody thinks i'm crazy here am i do i have any answers do i have anybody say here am i because i'm going to tell you if you don't say here am i don't pout when god don't use you Don't pout and say, why don't God use me? The Lord's waiting for somebody to say, Lord, here am I. You see, it's easy. You say, whoa, I've done this, and God don't care what you've done. Oh, man, I just, I'm going to make some Pentecostal man. God don't care how holy you think you are. <laughs> I'm going to really get some people mad. Maybe not here, but they'll hear this. God don't care how much you put in your offering plate. God's wanting somebody say, here am I, Lord. Mold me and make me in your image. Here am I, Lord. You see, religion puts this other stuff on there. I'm not saying none of this other stuff ain't good and that we don't need it. I'm just saying that it has no bearing on where you are with God. Is this all right? I know a lot of pastors say, Pastor, you shouldn't say that stuff. I'm, not, I'm talking about coming out. Let go of my people. I can't wait to walk in the house of God worship center and we won't worry whether it's 10 30 or 12 o'clock or 2 o'clock only thing on our mind we're going to worship the lord i can't wait to see our altars full of people crying out to god saying god i thank you for your healing god i thank you for your salvation why because there's a presence of god that's going to move when we get where god can lead us to come out my let my people go we have to exit 
And the reason I'm using the word extra because the Holy Ghost told me to, but what happens sometimes we try to put it under our feet. I've been a lot of putting stuff under your feet, but you can't put that under your feet because it grows. The more you stomp it, the more it grows. But boy, when you exit out of it, it's gone. I hope, you, I, hope, I hope you're seeing this. Here am I, Lord. And then something strange happens. Now, this is just phase one. I'm, I, I'm not even going to get to phase two or three today. It's phase one. The Lord said, Moses, you're on the holy ground. Take your shoes off. Uh, put up Joshua 5, I think it's 14. No, I think that's it. I want to say something. We want the presence of God, but we don't want to pay the price. We can't offer anything we want up to God. I'm going to get kind of, say, get down home, Bill. Let's get down there. Because you say, but pastor, here was God calling Moses. Moses said, here am I. And first thing the Lord said, Moses, take off your shoes. He said, you're on holy ground. You think you can walk in here with your shoes on? How dare you? I'm putting it in my word, but that's what God was saying. How dare you, Moses, come near me if your shoe's on? What he was saying. He told Joshua. Now, I want to lead up to this verse. Joshua led the people across into the second crossing. And there was five things that Joshua had to do that nobody liked. I'm not going all through five, but I'll go through the first one. And this is the last one. The first thing Joshua had to do was circumcise all the men in front of the enemies for five days the men laid there and could not move everybody in Jericho and even the kids could have come out and killed them the cutting of the flesh if you want to get near God there's a circumcision of the heart the world has to go and God gets to come in it is not easy. Come on now. We can sit and watch gun smoke for two hours. If worship goes over 30 minutes, we're mad at the pastor. We can, we can turn on the radio and listen for three hours. If the, if the pastor preached too long, man, he's a long-winded guy. We got some flash that's got to be cut off. The circumcision. And then we say, we want the presence of God. I'm going to ask you something. Have you wanted the presence of God enough to let God come into your home this week? To let God move upon you? To spend some time in His presence before you ever got to church? Do you want the presence of God enough to come to church early and say, I'm going to, Lord, be there early that I can enjoy this? Don't get quiet on me. I'm preaching good. I'm just showing you that God says, take your shoes off. In other words, I have never been, there's a difference in having the Holy Spirit move on you and to be in the presence of God. There's a total difference. There's a total difference. I have never been, when the presence of God fell, that he did not require. It automatically. The first thing he does is this right here. I do it without thinking. Pull my shoes off. I can't help it. After, after I get through out of the presence, I'll say, where's my shoes? The next thing is, God don't like nothing making noise but him. He will not allow. He never has allowed me to have keys in my pocket when his presence is falling great. Next thing, my wallet. Come on now. There's, there's one thing that's off limits to my wife. <laughs> don't mess my wallet. I ain't the only man thinks that. You're just afraid to say it because you got to go home for your wife. 
I do too. <laughs> but, but you see what I'm saying? It ain't, has nothing to do with holiness. That God wants me. Not the things that I'm packing around. I hope you understand that. I'm not saying that this is wrong. I'm saying there's things that you have that hinders your presence of God. I'm going slow because I'm digging deep a little bit. I don't know how much further I get. I haven't even read this verse yet. And he said, this is where the angel of the Lord come, Joshua. I told you about it. He circumcised. And then it says, nay, the Lord, Joshua said, are you God? And he said, nay, I'm the captain of the host of the Lord. I believe it was Jesus. He's the captain of the host. That's my opinion. Because he says, now I, as I now come, and Joshua fell on his face to the earth. This is why I know it wasn't an angel. No angel would let Joshua fall on his face. You can't worship angels, and they will not let you worship them. And he fell on his face and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Go to the next verse. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot. Now, I personally, this is my opinion. I personally believe it was the left shoe. I did not say shoes. It was a covenant shoe. But that don't matter. In other words, the angel said, from now on, it's between me and you. The covenant's with us. You can take my word. That's what the Lord was saying, Joshua. From off thy feet, the place where thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. You say, but pastor, that was the old Bible. Why did Jesus only take three disciples up to the Mount Transfiguration with him? You ever asked your question that? Why didn't he take all of them? I don't believe the rest was ready. I believe there was three of them that was ready. Because you know what happened on the Mount Transfiguration? The glory of God fell. Amen? And Jesus, they seen Jesus in his glory. And they come off the mountain and say, let us build a tabernacle here. They wasn't as ready as they should have been. I'm not going there. I'm just holding back. Then the Lord says this to Joshua. I mean, to going back to Moses. See, this is what God's saying to us. Go to, this is found. You, you'll have to read some of this, but we'll start in verse number. Uh, let's go to verse 7. Verses 7 through 9 of chapter 3. This is what the, Okay, you just need prayer for something? Okay, we sure will. We'll be praying for him. Let's just raise our hands right now. Heavenly Father, we pray for this need right now. Lord, we know, God, that, that you love them, Lord. Touch Joyce, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And this is what the Lord's saying to the church right now. He's saying, I know your afflictions. I know your sorrow. I know your pain. I know what you went through. You see, I, I'm, this is what I'm going to tell you. We can't fight each other because we're all one family. We're all one family. I don't care whether they, if the right arm agrees with the left arm, I don't care, but we're still one family. Amen. And the Lord says, I know, because I believe that all churches, all God's people, are wanting God to move in this day. They all have lost children, lost families, sickness. They have dire needs going on in their life. They're in desperate situations, and they want to see their, they want to see their families brought to God. They want to see this happening, and they're crying out to God. And the Lord says, I know what you're crying out. I want to ask you, how many people right here got loved ones, friends, or family that is in dire need of God to move in their life. Look at that. We all, every hand, every family went up. God knows about it. How many that are 
don't you don't have to show your hand but how many actually sat in here this morning that you may have something going on in your life that you need God to move on right now maybe sickness problems there's things that happen God knows about it this is why I can hear old Moses saying let my people go See, there was something happened when the Lord rose sometimes we don't preach it the right way. For some reason, we think that Jesus just died on the cross and rose again to take us to heaven. That is not biblical. You know what he done that for? To restore his kingdom. And it, Brother Carlos, I love this because his kingdom is now. It's now kingdom. Going to heaven is a benefit of being part of his kingdom. And so he done this to bring back his kingdom. You can read it in all four Gospels. The kingdom of God is at hand. Go preach the kingdom of the Lord is at hand. He said, my kingdom's here. But see, we're not kingdom living because we're still tied to the things around. I'm saying it's time that the church comes out. Exodus into a place that God wants us to be because there is a land of milk and honey. There's a land of milk and honey. When I say that, there's a land of healings and miracles. Will we go through things on this earth? Sure. Is it going to be a bed of roses? No. Will we be persecuted from time to time? Yes. But when we are kingdom walkers, we are automatically overcomers. Amen. We're overcomers. We, we don't surrender. We don't give up. And so... He says, I know it. He said, I know your cries. Do you know God knows how many hairs in your head? Some people you don't have to remember too much. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Even when you, like CJ back there, and you shave him off, he still knows. He knows how many beard hairs you got. If he knows how many head, hair in your head, he knows how many's in your beard. What I'm trying to say is God knows you. You are not a number. You know, we live in a number society. No matter where you go, they want to know part of your Social Security number. Can you give me the last four digits of your Social Security? Uh, no, ma'am, I can't do that. I said, I believe it's against the law for you to ask. They said, well, we need your birthday. I said, well, I'll give you my birthday. They said, well, legally we can ask as long as it's not your whole social security and as long as it's your last digits. I said, well, maybe you can, but I don't have to give it. I'm kind of funny about stuff. I'm a private kind of guy. I don't want nobody to know my last four digits. <laughs> Is that all right? And Becky knows I'm that way. I got a lot of torch y'all don't know about. <laughs> but God knows them. I go to the same gasoline pump. If somebody's in, I go by. I pulled in a, a place yesterday going to buy me some chicken feed and my parking pot was full. I said, I'll just get it another day. <laughs> I got twerps, buddy. But what I'm trying to say is God knows about all of them. <laughs> and he still uses me. <laughs> but I'm looking at this congregation and I see a lot of you probably got twerps you're afraid to mention. I could pick on Carlos. I know one of his. Can I pick on one of yours? Carlos can't stand to drink coffee out of a chip cup. He will not drink coffee out of a chip cup. I've seen him go through 15 cups. I said, Carlos, they're all clean. <laughs> you see, what I'm trying to say is, I, ever since I, he showed me that, I'm about the same way. <laughs> 
some twerps can jump on you. But we all got twerps. But here's the Lord knows them and he knows your needs. And now I'm going to end right here because I, I didn't even make it for as I wanted. That's all right. I felt the lift of the Holy Spirit. Has this not been awesome? I'll dismiss because we can go get our happy meal. <laughs> Y'all got, but to be truthful, I don't know about nobody else, but I think I do. We're kind of tired of the quota, Amen. the way it is. You know, we, we want different. We want God to move. I don't care how it is. You know, so, some people said, well, Pastor, if you don't get preached, you'll be, no, I wouldn't. If the Holy Ghost, if I come in here and the Holy Ghost spoke through somebody else, I'd be so tickled with me from Can we stand? One of the things I got to learn is when you're done, you're done. Got amen out, Sister Becky. <laughs> I could make her shout if I prayed right now. <laughs> is, it, is it not good to have Sister Maggie here, Pat Graham, baby? Hey, it's not she a proud, can't turn around and show everybody how proud you are. And you have a right to be proud. Is that not special? That's something that money can't buy. That's something that nobody can give you but God. And God smiled on you and gave you a grandbaby. That is so special. I'm going to tell you, don't let nobody discredit you and say, well, you got, no, it's an honor to have grandkids and children. It's an honor to, man, I feel an anointing. Great grandson. There's another honor. See that? A great grandson. She's telling her age and don't mean to. <laughs> but that that's good. And one of these days we're gonna have grandparent day. And we're gonna all bring our pictures and honor God with our pictures. Would that be awesome? I think it'd be awesome. God is so good. Anybody for to pray? Amen. We, we Amen. It, it, I have known several people besides ones Lisa said that have issues like this. It's 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 epidemic. He, he's going sister Becky's gonna stand in for all these. If you would like to come around, uh, come on around because God's gonna do his name is Stephen. Stephen, put your hand on your heart. This may be new to you, I don't know, but I'm telling you what, you're fixing to feel the power of God move. Your heart's going to become back in rhythm. The flow's going to begin, and the strength's going to begin to move in that right now. Hallelujah. Brother Carlos, you come right up here because I know that you've been through some of this. Hallelujah. And God's brought you through. Heavenly Father, right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, the, all these ones, Lord, that have heart to rhythm problems, Lord, weak hearts, God. Father, we speak right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, right now. Lord, let the rhythm become, the heart begin to build strength, God. Lord, begin to pump and to operate, God, like it should. Lord, you're the healer, God, and we've obeyed you today, and we stood in this, Lord. Father, we ask it, Lord, in Jesus' name, be thou made whole.
we're going to hear some testimonies. Amen. If you've been healed from this, let us know because testimonies encourage others. Amen. God's good. Anyone else? Amen. Yes. And he said to tell you, keep holding his hand. Amen. Because the quietness of the sea is coming. Amen. The Amen. We're, Brother Russell's uh, he's been fighting a battle for a few months, a few weeks, really bad. And he's doing you do your best and your body gets weak, gets tired, but we know who our strength comes from. <laughs> And we're going to pray for him right now. Not only his strength, but Sister Wilma's going to begin to gain strength too. Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask God for the calmness of the sea. Lord, as you spoke to the sea and said, peace be still. God, we speak, Lord, right now into the life, Lord. Peace be still, God. Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, and we pray for strength, God, for Brother Russell, Lord, and Sister Wilma, God. Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.